Hey, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching. It would mean the world to us if you could just scroll down, like, hit the subscribe button for the Snaps YouTube channel. It goes a long way towards helping us out. Now, let's dive into some college football. Jaden Daniels was not the story of LSU Pro Day yesterday, Aaron. It was uh, mm -hmm. Malik Neighbors, who ran a 4 3 5 40. Had a 42, that would have been fourth of the combine. He had a 42 inch vert that had been second, a 10 9 broad. I think that would have been sixth. Or and then uh he benched 225 um 20 times. Damn. Which would have been fifth. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give that I'm gonna look that up real quick because I was impressed for his size. I was like, okay, I see you there, uh, uh Malik. Um, uh, but the okay, uh no, sorry, 15 225 reps. Still for wide receivers, pretty strong. That would have been fifth. Um what do you think, man? Marvin Harrison Jr. choosing not to work out at all at Pro Day, not to work out at all at the Combine. Malik goes mm -hmm. out there, puts up these numbers. Um, who should be wide receiver one, Malik or Marvin? Uh, I'm still going Marvin one. I think this is – I, I want to say it's like the quarterback situation where, like, you know, it depends on you know what flavor you like, what are you feeling that day. But – um. I think quarterbacks are a little bit different because I would say most 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 GMs and head coaches would still favor Caleb Williams. I do think this is a little bit different where it is a truly of which receiver do you fit you know believe fits best within your system. Um, I me personally, I'm going Marvin. Um, route running a little bit bigger, which I like. You know, Malik six foot, Marvin Harrison six three. I like that. It's yeah. a little bit of a yeah. big on the bigger side. Um, you know, those three three extra inches go a long way. Um, but I mean, both great. I mean, both are going to be top seven, top ten picks. Um, both very similar. Can move around. Can play the outside. Can play the inside. Uh, I just think that that Marvin, with the size, has really answered every question for me, based on the film. Uh, can take over a football game. Uh, incredible catch. Incredible balance. Route running ability. Just absolute perfection. So um, I take him one. I think Marvin one. Malik's like a, you know. If Marvin goes at five, Malik will go at seven. Yeah, I, I I agree in that. I think that if we tier it, it's Marvin and Malik, and then you yeah. get to Adunze and the rest of the crew. Like I do believe. I would that's take obviously I would take Brian Thomas. Over, uh, I would take Brian. No, Thomas that, okay, though. So okay, but <clears throat> that's that's what I mean though. But like, yes, Marvin and Malik are in a tier unto themselves, yes. and then you get to the next tier, which would be yeah. like Adunze, Brian Thomas. Um, we we'll get. I think yeah, Xavier, Xavier Worthy, yeah, bro. Xavier Worthy, AD Mitchell, maybe yeah. somewhere in that crew as well. But um, but yeah, I mean, so you can't go wrong, right? No. I, I it has been interesting though. A, a lot of LSU voices trying to paint it as like, and maybe there's the one thing I will say for Malik is he does seem to have um that absolute dog in him where he yeah. wasn't actually shying away from this. He was like, look, I want to be wide receiver one. Mm -hmm. And like ask Justin Jefferson, what do you think he wanted to be? And he didn't look what he did. Like, and he's like, if I don't get it, I'm going to prove that I should yeah. have been wide receiver one where Marvin seems to have a little bit, a bit more of like, a, I'm just going to put my head down. Look, fuck all this test and shit. Like I'm practicing football. And yeah. if you draft me, you go get a player um, regardless of where I think, the size, I think for me as a quarterback, I think it's the size. I yeah. That's, six, that's, that's, six foot is hard. And, and there, but I mean, a big when, difference. Won't Malik operate more out of the slot and Marvin more on the outside no, anyway? No, you can do both. I mean, like OG, uh, I mean, if you want to do LSU comparisons here, like OBJ was in the outside and inside. I think these guys uh, in, in today's game, and we, we've seen it in college, you have to be versatile. You have to play on the yeah. inside. You have to play on the outside. Um, I think both these guys are savvy enough to be able to do both. We've seen both guys be able to do that. I mean, hell, I talked to the LSU staff last year about this, like moving Malik around, trying to get him matched up was one of their keys over and over again every single mm -hmm. week. Um, obviously Marvin has in his DNA, like it is in his blood playing receiver. He is a pros pro. Um, but six, three to six foot. If you're kind of just like, okay, I got two guys that in my mind are the same. I love both of them. Both of them are top 10 talent. I'm going with the guy that's six, three over six foot. It's, uh, it is crazy to me that, um, Malik neighbors, who almost didn't even get an offer to LSU, despite being from Louisiana, was about to go to Mississippi State, is now LSU's all-time leading receiver. Mm -hmm. He uh, has the most catches ever with 184, and he has the most yards ever with uh, 3,002 or 3,003, somewhere around there. 
So shout out Malik. Look, I don't think you can go wrong. Malik, no. did, Malik, Malik though certified um, his high draft status yeah. yesterday. And Brody Jordan White says no one talking about Keon Coleman whatsoever. We were talking about Keon Coleman on my local radio show yesterday from a, from a Saints perspective. I would love in the second round if the Saints mm-hmm. wanted to draft Keon Coleman. I mean, you want to talk about you need help in the red zone? Whew. Go get that big motherfucker because he's giant. He's yeah. strong. He's great. Great, at strong hands. Is. Yeah, yeah, like great at, like when, when you try to fight him. So, look, this this wide receiver class is absurd. That's interesting, too. Like, it is a very, very – I love the receiving. Like, this is probably the best um, receiving core that we've seen from a class. I mean, hell, look look even further deep. Like, you may be able to get, like, a Troy Franklin out of Oregon in the late yeah. second round, third round. Uh, Tez, Her- uh, Tez Walker. Tez Walker, yeah. You know, hell, you get Ricky Purcell, uh, Jermaine Byrne. I, Bro, Roman is, Wilson, yeah, from Michigan is great. It's a deep, dominated the senior bowl. Deep class of receivers, very deep class of receivers. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, look, George says uh, uh, you had Jaden Daniels versus Kyle McCord talking about the Marvin versus Malik. Like, who had the benefit there? That's why, again, like debating Marvin versus Malik, I don't really. There's no real objective answer. You can have yeah. your opinion, and that's fine, yeah. but like, there's too many variables in play. Uh, oh. Got any thoughts on the running backs from Maroney Land Music yet? The running back class sucks. Um, that's my a thought. I mean, it's just when very running back average kind of sucks as it's well. Very, very average class. Running back as a whole, just in yeah. the NFL meta right now, is just in such a tough spot because the problem with running back is. Like, yes, 99% of guys, uh, let's say, will not be able to do what like prime Derrick Henry does, right? Yep. But they can do enough of what Derrick Henry does as to be serviceable. Where like the upside that fully investing in a running back offers is maybe not as high as spending that money elsewhere and mm. just getting enough out of that position. When's the first running back taken off the board? Late second, I know, early I third. Don't, bro, I don't. I don't. I don't know the draft oh. like that. I don't know. I mean, you will I mean, hear running is, back. Who is it? Who is the third? Running, who is the top running back? Um, Jonathan Brooks. I mean, maybe Corum. Yeah, uh, Trey Benson at Florida State. I think and like Trey Benson didn't even have a good year. I felt like I never even heard no, about Trey Benson this I year. Know. Oh, J- I mean, J- Marshawn J- Lloyd. Look, remember we talked a lot about Marshawn Lloyd being the season. Like he looked good. He looked. Better than he did, but he kind of died off towards the end of the season. But I feel like that's USC and as a whole, kind of everyone died off a little bit. Huh. Well, don't worry, they're not going to die off anymore because, uh, where was it? Let me find it here. I have it. Oh, Lincoln Riley has said that, uh, USC's figured out NIL, saying NIL has taken some monster leaps since we have been here, it's taking some monster leaps the past several months. It's been really positive. It's great for our fan base supporters, for everybody. Just been gain, gaining understanding of what is imperative. It imperative. You have to have it. Um, and and he basically goes on to say, like, you know, that being in LA, they got all these sorts of outsized deals. Mm-hmm. But what they maybe didn't grasp at the time was like, you have to have it from your donors, your yeah. already made donors in your collective, so that you can kind of manage it better. And basically goes on to say again that they basically learned that it's not like great to have. It's not a want that it is an imperative and that mm-hmm. USC has figured that out. And then they just flip a couple guys from UGA, maybe from Georgia maybe? from Georgia. Yeah. yeah. Um, listen, if you got the money, as we've seen, you could build a team, you could build them fast. Ole Miss put together a ton of money. You see what they did. You saw what Ohio state did with the money. USC, you're in LA. You have an incredible brand. You are now part of the Big Ten. I know there's a lot of excitement for the fan base being part of that conference now. Um, if you can just get buy-in from the fans, which technically means like legit buy-in, like can you get them to to open up their checkbook to to purchase players? Who? Why would you not want to go to USC? Like if you got a call from USC and says, "Hey, yo, T. Bob, I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars to come be the center for USC. Come live in L. A." Well, I, I don't know. I don't think. The, I don't think. The, I don't think the environments are as tight. Like I'd rather go to like a. If it's just about money, I'd rather go to like a Texas, and be in that stadium in Austin, or or even like I don't know. 
Oh, I know. I'm, ju- I'm just talking about what I would do. Yeah, and, I, and I don't really want to live in L.A. I mean, I guess if you have money in L.A., it's great, but your money's going to go less far there than anywhere else. But maybe that's just like an old man opinion. Yeah, I think it's an old man opinion. Yeah. Imagine being 18 saying, like, I'm about to make six figures as a as a USC football player. Yeah. Imagine sweet. being 18. Yeah, too. Yeah, but but now but now you're like, okay, but what if I go to Florida and I have no income tax? I go to Miami and don't and, and like compared to like 50% income. I, I don't know. These are the weird things that they're gonna have to like True. that these young guys are starting to have to make decisions mm-hmm. on. True.